differentiate cos 4x from these principles. Differentiate cos 4x from first principle. So, if you differentiate cos 4x from first principle, you will get negative 4 sine 4x. Four now, we want to see how negative 4 sine 4x four is coming about. If you differentiate a trigonometric function from first principle, we have the limit as x tends to 0 of sine x over x is always 1 when you use an operator's rule to sort out the determinant form in that limit, isn't it? Are you seeing that? So using an operator's rule to get rid of the determinant form, we found that limit as x tends to 0 of sine x over x is just 1. That is the first thing you need to know if you want to differentiate any trigonometric function for half principle. Are you clear? The next thing you need to know, that is case 1, the next thing you need to know is what we call the factor formula. The factor formula with change of variables. Are we clear? So cos x plus a plus b is what? Cos a cos? Then if a is positive, the other side is? Minus. Then sine? Sine a sine? To go over here. This is, this is where we derive the factor you can remember from trigonometry, isn't it? This is the cosine sum angle formula, then we get the cosine difference angle formula, cos a minus b. See there. What is cos a minus b? Cos a cos? Cos a cos? Cos b, uh -huh. Plus, when a is negative, the other side is? Positive, plus sign. Then you now recall from first principle, change in y is y2 minus y. If you add two points, x1, y1, and x2, y2, isn't it? So change in y will be y2 minus y1, change in x will be x2 minus x1, isn't it? So it means for the factor formula we want, we want the difference between the two. Are you seeing that? Two over one, yeah? Meaning in factor formula, we want the the difference between them is supposed to be y2 minus y1. Maybe subtraction sign is what is supposed to be between them. Have you seen the scenario? So you find the difference of the two formulas. Meaning you must have a sum and difference angle formula. So it doesn't matter whether you are starting with the difference one or the sum one. The fact is that you get the same answer at the end. Are we clear? To one point. So for us to get y2 minus, for us to get a negative sign between them, we must subtract the two equations, isn't it? So if you subtract the two equations, what do you get? Cos, this side we have cos a plus b minus cos a minus b, you be equal to the other side, this minus this goes to what? Zero. See there? This one is minus 2 sine a sine. Yes, negative this, negative is supposed to be negative, isn't it? So it is minus 2 sine a sine b. So where there is a plus b, we put theta. Where there is a minus b, we put beta. Where there is a, meaning we need to get the value of a. So, there. so how do we get the value of a? We add the two equations. If you add the two equations, you get here 2. 2a two plus b and negative b is 0. So there. It's equal to theta plus, plus beta. You go come on, yeah? So what is A? You divide both sides by So where there is A, we are going to put theta plus beta over over 2. Are we clear there? Then how do you get beta? So you subtract the two equations. A plus B is equals to theta. A minus B is equals to beta. If you subtract the two equations, A minus A is here, isn't it? B minus negative B. 2B. 2b, see there? Theta minus beta. So what is b? b is what? Is theta minus beta over? Are we clear? So what do we have here? We now have cos, cos what? a plus b. We have cos, cos theta minus cos beta. See there? Cos theta minus cos beta is equal to what? Are we together? Cos theta minus cos beta is equal to minus 2 
minus two sign, move on, minus two sign, A, what is A? Theta plus beta over, theta plus beta over two times sine B, what is B? B is theta minus beta over, theta minus beta over two, that. So, for you to differentiate a trigonometric function from first principle, all you need to know is that important limit. Limit as x tends to 0 of sine x over x. It applies to both sine and cos. Let us now start differentiating. So you are told to differentiate cos for? So you are told to differentiate cos for x from first principle. So what is the first step? You let y to be cos for? You let y to be a function of that, isn't it? So from first principle, the derivative dy over dx is what? Its limit as change in x tends to 0 of what? Of f of x plus change in x minus f of x over. So here we have x1, y1, x2, y2, two points. So one point is arbitrary, x, y. I start getting the points. x1 is what? It's just x, isn't it? What is y1? Let us move direct. y is cos 4x. So if here is y1, that is x1. We move direct here. Are we together? So y1 is cos 4? y1 is cos? For x1, see you? If here is y1, it means there is also x1, see you? So y1 is for x1, we are done with that. So we now substitute the value of x1. What is the value of x1? x1 is, is x. So what do we have here? Cos 4x. Because whether it's x1, you put x, see you? Move on. What is x2? x2 is x plus. Because between x1 and x2 there is change in x. So x2 is x1 plus change in x, we get x2. See you? So x2 is x1 plus change in x, but x1 is x, so that is just x plus change in x. Are we together? Two more points. Meaning, x1 and x2 is the same for all the functions from that principle. See you? Isn't it? Then you move, what is y2? Tell me the value of y2 directly. Cos? Cos 4x2. Because if you put 2 here in y, you must also put 2 in x. See you? So it means y2 is cos 4x2. See you? Are we together? Is that okay? Then you substitute x2. You put the value of x2. What we are substituting with brackets. See you? Are we together? So if you bracket that, you have cos 4. Whether it's x2, put the value of x2, which is x plus change in. So you substitute the value of x2. And x2 is what? x plus change in x, isn't it? I am expand, open that bracket. So you have cos what? 4 times x is? 4x, 4 times change in x is? Yes. See what is outside the bracket multiplies everything inside. See you? Because the whole of this value x plus change in x, the whole of it is x2. So it means this format multiply all the terms of x2. So, isn't it? Are we together? So what is the gradient? What is the gradient? Change in y over change in. You don't even need to waste time writing gradient. Just put change in y, y2 minus 1, 1 over x2 minus x1, isn't it? To go more. So what do you get? y2, put the value of y2 is cos plus 4 minus y1 cos cos 4x over what are you? Now, now, what is now the derivative? Isn't it? The derivative dy over dx is the limit as change in x tends to the, the limit as change in x tends to zero, zero. So the limit as change in x tends to zero of the gradient. Are we together? So the derivative is the limit as change in x to zero of the gradient. And what is the gradient? Cos 
4x plus 4 change in x minus cos 4x over change in x. Then you now ask yourself, can you get that in here? It is in determining a form, isn't it? Can you see that? Because if you substitute for change in x, if you put 0 here, well, ladies and gentlemen, that is in determining. So it means the only way to do is it what? Factor formula. Meaning you can transform this abstraction to be multiplication. Are you seeing that? To overhaul that? Meaning you cannot deal with it when it is abstraction. Meaning cos theta minus cos beta. You cannot deal with it. Then now you now see cos theta minus cos beta. Meaning this is theta and this is. Are you now seeing it? So what is theta? What is our theta? Our theta is 4x plus because it is cos theta minus cos beta. It is cos theta minus cos. So our theta is what here? Our theta is 4x plus. 4 change in x, isn't it? And what is our beta? Our beta is not cos 4x. Remember we have cos beta. Beta is what is inside the cos? 4x, isn't it? It is cos beta, meaning beta is 4? 4x. Four so we found theta and beta. Then what else do we need? See, we need theta plus beta over 2. See there? What is theta plus beta over 2? This plus this divided by 2, see there? Yeah. 4x plus 4x, 8x, isn't it? To go for more, See, that is 8x plus 4 change in x over. See, that is theta plus beta over 2. This plus this. 4x plus 4x is 8x plus 4 change in x in the numerator, then over 2 in the numerator, see there? Mm -hmm. Then the next thing we want is what? Theta minus beta over. Are you seeing we are getting everything? We found the theta. We found beta, we found theta plus beta over 2, we need to find theta minus beta over 2. See there? To go for more. Theta minus beta over 2. What do you get? This minus this. You remain in numerator, you may be. 2 change in x, isn't it? Good. Over 2, which is 2 change in. That is what I mean. See there? So theta minus beta 4 change in x plus this minus this remain in 4 change in x, then it is over 2. Are you together? So can we now substitute? So it means here we have limit as change in x tends to 0. This cos theta minus cos beta, cos theta minus cos beta is the same as what? It is the same as negative. Negative 2, sin. Sin what? Theta plus beta over 2. 8 plus 4 change in x over over 2 uh -huh. times same same oh yeah same uh, which is good then the whole of that is over what cos theta minus cos beta is over what it is over change in x. Yeah. Good, 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 good. Now look at that. Very simple. It will be very simple. What is the first thing you do? So you remove out there. You factorize out the constant, isn't it? The constant here is negative. See negative 2. So if you remove negative 2 outside, then you ask yourself, this change in x, should I put it over this or should I put it over that? That is the big question, isn't it? That is the big, the big question. The big question is answered from here. You have a limit of x over, say x over, over x. Meaning if this is, this is change in x, then it must be over change in x. Are you seeing that? So it means this change in x, you put, you put it over sin which has one term. To go for more. Because we need something like sin change in x over change in x, or sin x over x, or sin y over y, or sin g over g, see there? So it means this change in x, we put it over this. Because this is the one which has one term. This has two terms, 8x plus. These are two terms. But here we don't have two terms, one. See there? Are you not seeing where change in x is going to? You put it over sin which has one, 
one time because that is what is here. Senor, to go back one. So it means here we are now going to have negative two into limit as ten the next tends to zero. Then the first term there we have seen what? It is this is eight x. 8x, let us move, 8x plus oh, over, two. then it is time sin, sin, over, so you see, this one, you can either put it over this or over this, because the sign between it is multiplication, to go over one, because if the whole of this is over this, meaning it is either over this or over this, because of multiplication, see you? Meaning if you have a, b over 2, this is the same as a over 2 times b, or it is the same as a times b over 2. So we ask ourselves, where do we put it? Over this or over that? So there. Are we well? Yes. So, we put it over the same which as one term. Then now you ask yourself, it is supposed to be, if it is sin y, it is supposed to be over y. Are you seeing that? Meaning if this is sin 2 change in x, it is supposed to be over 2 change in x. So there. Isn't it? So how do you ensure that this is 2 change in x? This one must also be 2 change in x. Meaning you multiply both the numerator and denominator by. Are you seeing that? Because you're supposed to have in y over y. Meaning if this is y, this must also be y. So it means if this is 2 change in x, this must also be 2 change in x, isn't it? So if it is change in x, it means we multiply both the numerator and denominator by 2. To make it two change next so that whatever is here must be the same as whatever is here. Have you seen that? To go more. See now this two goes outside and outside. So you factor like outside and outside. See you? So if this two comes outside, it is two times two, you get. Are you seeing? See you? If you factor as that with the new made outside, you want the two outside. Two times two, see it goes to four. Yes. Then you now move. Now if 2 change in x is y, so it is like you have sin y over y. Senio, what is that limit of sin y over y? Huh? So it means this one you put automatically 1. So this is what I substitute now, isn't it? To go back more So if I substitute that again, negative 4 sign, where there is change in x, you put what? 0, senio. Is that okay? So well, the change in x you put 0, so in bracket you remain the same, 8x plus 0 over, because change in x is 0, 0 times 4 is 0, see there? Is that okay? So 8x plus 0 is just 8x. So what do we have? Negative 4, same, 8 divided by 2 remain with 4. So what do we have? Negative 4, same, 4x. Four so if you differentiate cos 4x from first principle, you get negative 4 sin 4x. You want it up to the end. Those videos are around 7 minutes, 6 minutes, isn't it? 8 10. You just watch what if you leave the end, you leave a comment. It doesn't matter whether the comment is positive or negative. What matters is that you left a comment. <laughs> But liking is, is, is a must. Just like, don't dislike even if it's a little bit.